Okay, everybody. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Mind Caustic Life with Pamela Coey, that's me, and our wonderful guest, Laura Murphy, all the way from Mulroney, Ireland. She is the amazing founder of Painting with Fire 21 through 23, and she's available for this call. I'm so grateful to her for everything she's provided the world um, of encaustic painters. It's, it's incredible uh, what she has done, and more about that later. So the reason that you're here today is because you are curious about encaustic painting, whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, whether you're advanced, all three of you are here. And just, you know, hang in there. This is a pretty short presentation, walking you through a little bit of my history and uh, why it is that I absolutely love this medium. And there's a special early bird offer at the end. I will tell you how to get my encaustic course for free. And then I will also uh, tell you about some new special effects videos that I've been working on for those who are interested in painting with fire. So, and the call is being recorded. So I will share this with you. Don't worry about taking notes. You don't have to do that unless you really want to. Uh, I do encourage you to uh, jot down a question um, so that at the end, if I don't catch it in the chat, then you can ask it. Okay. Uh, first of all, just a quick background. Uh, and this is my my humble studio uh, as it used to be on Roaring Lion Road uh, back in 2008. But uh, just, just a quick briefer on what is encaustic. Encaustic is a medium of working with hot wax. You can see on my palette here, I've got pancake griddles that I got from the thrift store. I've got an electric frying pan, thrift store, box fan, probably thrift store, I don't remember. Um, super simple in uh, like, you know, the materials, most of them you can get at a thrift store. That's one of the first things that appealed to me, but encaustic goes back at least 2000 years. Um, and when I read up about encaustic, uh, the Greeks used encaustic medium to seal their ships so they would not leak. Encaustic is made with beeswax. You melt it in a frying pan like this and you add Damar resin, which is kind of gooey, like tree sap, you mix them together and that's called encaustic medium. You can make it yourself. And that's one thing that I show you in my, in my course because you can save a lot by making it yourself. And I think most encaustic artists, when they realize how much fun it is and how serious they are, they pretty quickly make their own. And so it was later um, the Egyptians started to paint these sar sarcophagi. These sarcophagus uh, where pharaohs were buried. Uh, you see the faces of the um, Fayum. Okay, we're going to try and mute everybody here. See if I can mute everybody. And uh, hopefully not. Okay, I didn't mute myself, so that's good. All right. So yes, the Fayum mummy portraits are what a lot of people associate encaustic with. And then later in the 1970s, Jasper Johns, he painted that famous American flag and target. You can Google him, Jasper Johns, very famous. Um, people have said they cr have cried in front of his work when they see it live. It's just so lustrous, textural. Um, it's unlike any medium. And I think that's why um, in 2008, I set up my studio to do this because I had seen one person's painting that was encaustic and I had never seen anything that came anywhere close to the surface quality, which was pure luster. I can't explain it in any other way. Uh, and at the end, we'll have Laura give us her take on encaustic as well. And so I set up to work in encaustic in our attached garage. You don't need a fancy studio. You don't even need a lot of space. I was in a, a very tiny space here. And at first I used a box fan for ventilation. You can see it stuck in my window. Uh, I believe this was summertime, but I did this in the winter when I had a, a two liter bottle of uh, water. It literally froze. Um, you could see the pictures of it frozen, but I had a box fan in the window, even in the winter because ventilation is important, but you don't need anything fancy. So then I uh, got into encaustic and decided to splurge and I got a ventifume. Uh, some artists use this, but you don't need anything fancy. And to be honest with you, I think my box fan did a great job. An open door, an open window, um, those work very well too. Okay, so getting set up, that's very important that you guys, uh, you know, for those of you who are beginners, it's um, very important that you know uh, the tools you need, but, but also to realize that you don't need anything fancy. Look, I've got cookie trays here. 
these are pretty inexpensive, like $1 brushes from Ace Hardware, uh, empty tuna cans, pet food cans, they hold your wax. Like I mentioned, you can go to the thrift store and almost nine times out of 10, get a used pancake griddle or electric frying pan. And I've been collecting those. I started to hoard them. I was kind of embarrassed, but because they were so inexpensive, you know, a couple of dollars. So I use cheap chip brushes as well as these guys, which are hake brushes, H-A-K-E. And the reason I like them is because the application of wax, you can see that they come quite wide if you work larger. And also um, they, they, because of the way they are, and these are all natural bristles, you don't wanna use anything synthetic. You can apply a very thin layer of your encaustic medium or beeswax. So I got a lot of things at the thrift stores I mentioned, electric frying pans, pancake riddles. Um, oil paints can be used to make your colors. And I show you that in my course. Uh, you don't have to go and buy the most expensive encaustic paints. Um, how I started out was I made my own. And I show you how I did that because, hey, you know, why not start that way and find out if you even like the medium? I stirred it up in a pet can. And that's what you saw on the palettes over there, the griddles. And then this is just one way that I found it pretty much fun to organize my colors that I collected and made. You'll see that I've got my, you know, colors here, like reds, yellows, blues, and, and so on. And uh, I also kept my beeswax palettes, my empty tins, you know, that kind of thing. So how you set up your studio? Is of course up to you, but I love to give some of my favorite tips. And again, the pet food containers, you can see a little better here. I started out my art career, I'd say with watercolor back in, uh, how long ago was that, 1984 or six, or no, 1986. And I, I did a lot of watercolor. Well, the amazing thing is, um, you know, I did that for 10 years where I didn't actually start in cost until 2008. Uh, but when I started it, there was no way I was ever going to quit this medium. Um, other mediums like watercolor, I don't really do that one anymore. Uh, and there are many reasons I'll, I'll tell you as we go through the work that I've created in, in caustic, I'll tell you uh, some of the reasons why I love it. So again, I worked in a tight space, uh, but in this space right here, which is like you couldn't fit a car in here unless the car were like micro sized, but I painted a four foot by six foot painting on this table I remember I, I had like six inches to walk around my table, but I did it. You know what? You can do it. Um, dry pigments. Yes, you can make them from dry pigments plus encaustic medium if you want to. Now, I have a lot of dry pigments, but uh, at this stage of the game, um, I don't necessarily want to work with dry pigments. That's my personal choice. So I'd rather use oil paint um, for most cases or just buy the, the paints that are already made because a little tiny bit goes a long, long way if you know what you're doing, unless you're working super large scale. That's the time when you might need a lot more. But this shows you how I made my own waxes. Okay, so I knew nothing in 2008. I took my very first workshop from Shauna Moore and she was a great instructor. She's a great painter, anyone who knows her work um, but I did these without this. I did these before I took a workshop. I don't even know what I was doing. I, I knew nothing about what I was doing, but I did some drawings in graphite. I then adhered them to panels and I covered them with wax. So all these variations in tone, meaning value, are actually graphite. The beauty of this medium is that, wow, imagine you can actually put encaustic over photography or collage material or drawings. Um, you can have highly textured surfaces. You can have bright colors. You can have desaturated colors. You can do anything in this medium. Uh, and, and in this case, the way that I got uh, this shape and some of these other, like this is a very intricate pattern down here. I used a Katagama stencil. Uh, katagama stencils are used to make kimono patterns. And when I saw them on eBay, I bought a few uh, and they're very brittle because they're usually quite old and they kind of fall apart a little bit, but you can use graphite powder with them and then put wax over it. I mean, that was pretty easy because I did this without knowing anything about the medium. So I want to want you to know that. Uh, this was not, this is still 2008 to 2010. This is right around the time that I, enrolled in grad school, or I should say, uh, was accepted into grad school. And again, drawings on paper with ink, 
and and some graphite, you know, graphite powder on paper. Uh, same thing. This was computer generated. If you can believe that, this was computer generated. I adhered it to a panel. Uh, this also has collage and covered it with encaustic. And then after that, I put a little bit of graphite powder on the top. And these two were the well. I'd say all three of these were exhibited uh, at the uh, in a one of my. Uh, exhibitions called Half Life. As, as soon as I got into grad school, I was able to get a, a spot at the University Center Gallery. And then uh, these two pieces ended up being acquired by the Montana Museum of Art and Culture, which kind of blew me away. I was like, you know, those things just don't happen. I, I wasn't expecting it. And when it happens, it's a nice surprise. So um, this picture was taken in that Roaring Lion studio by the Missoulian, uh, which is just the local paper in Missoula where the Radius Gallery is. And I think I had a show up coming with Radius and they they somehow got the Missoulian people. Uh, Tom Bauer was the photographer, he's so sweet. And he let me share this photo with everybody. He took the photo and uh, you can see there this, um, I'm just kind of like doing my thing, which is crazy. Like anyone who knows the way I paint, I, I definitely play, I'm definitely in the play stage. But I mean, when I got out my propane torch, and there were two guys there with the paper. They were really entertained. I mean, you get out your propane torch and you turn that thing on and <laughs> you get people's attention. So keep this in mind. If you're uh, a painter who's in a gallery and this is going to happen to me coming in July, the gallery uh, is new and they're like, hey, can you do a demo? And I'll tell you, when people see you with that torch or butane torch or whatever type of torch you have, or maybe it's a heat gun, they're mesmerized. There's no other medium that can captivate an audience like encaustic. So I just want to put that in there. Now, 2011. So three years later, I graduated um, with my MFA in 2010, 2011. You know, I just, just wanted to, I had gotten my MFA. What am I going to do? Well, I kept working in encaustic because there's so much to learn. Um, that's true with any medium. You never know it all. And I, I consider myself a beginner every time I walk in my studio. It doesn't matter how long I've been painting. It doesn't matter what medium it is. I am a beginner. That's my mindset. And it, it allows me to not have these ridiculous expectations that, oh my gosh, I'm walking in my studio. It's got to be a masterpiece. No. Uh, I walk in, I'm a beginner, whatever happens, happens, and I'm there to roll with the punch. And this painting here is called Sorrow, which I consider to be one of my favorite paintings after 30 years of painting. And this is another favorite. This one uh, was shown at the Holter Museum of Art. And um, there we had a big collector there. And I was like, um, he he actually sought me out and he bought the painting and I was like, wow, I mean, I again, I did not, I never expect these things to happen, but um, if you just do what you're meant to do, I think good things happen. You don't have to, don't do anything weird. You don't have to do anything weird. Just, just be yourself. That's the best thing you can ever do. Okay, so I am, uh, I work in four mediums. I work in, um, the first one was watercolor. I don't even consider that one of my mediums anymore because don't ask me how to do watercolor. I only did it for like 15 years. Um, if you if you don't do it, you lose it. Okay, that's the thing about art. You gotta, you gotta show up. Um, but what I do now is I work in encaustic. I use encaustic monotype, which I love. And then I also work in cold wax and oil. Uh, I've done a lot of workshops around the world in that medium. And then I also work in acrylic uh, slash mixed media. And Laura has invited me to teach in Mulrani, which I'm so excited about in 2020. Uh, is it four, I think, <laughs> or five? I'm sorry, I my mind is, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I have my 24. calendar. 24. It's when? 24. Thank you. That means it's next year, <laughs> which is great because I can't wait to go there. I've never been to Ireland. So if any of you out there want to join me, You'll just have to reach out to me or Laura. Okay, so I, uh, in all of these mediums, after all these years of painting, and if you guys are in that same boat, work in multiple mediums, have done this for many, many years, you start to figure out what it is that you must have. And, and I encourage my students to always think about this, like what must I have in my work for it to be me? Well, marks are probably, I'd say that's number one. And then shapes are very important to me, but they they don't necessarily come from nature. They come from, uh, like, I feel like they have to be ones that I create 
either from something like this where they're they're unpredictable, they're mysterious, they're they can't be planned. Um, they kind of have to happen uh, somewhere in the process, and my process is one that allows very much experimentation, risk, uh, failure. Um, I, I welcome failure. Like failure is like the number one thing that I love failure because it means that if I fail, uh, I've learned something. I don't learn anything when I succeed. And so I definitely welcome failure in my studio. So I had to find a way. Uh, and caustic is not like any other medium. You're not waiting for paint to dry, like acrylics or the long, long time to dry oils, right? I'm impatient. And that's what, one of the reasons why I think I love this medium, because I am, I, I will tell you, I'm an impatient artist. And when wax cools, you've all dropped candle wax on your hand and it's like, ouch, right? But then a second later, it's like, you don't even know that you would put hot wax on your hand. So being impatient, um, this is probably one reason why I love this medium, but that's just like the like sidebar, not the biggest reason. I love this because uh, the lustrous, glossy, gorgeous surface that nobody can even understand. They don't even understand how you got it. And that's fun as an artist when, you know, people are like, what, you did this with hot wax? So encaustic relies on concealing and revealing, and there are surprises around each corner. You couldn't, I mean, you could plan every move if you wanted to, but in my case, if you're more explorative and experimental, wow, then you might really want to try this medium. Tools of the trade, um, the more I explored this medium, so number one, you know, if you're new uh, or a beginner and, and you're curious, you don't need any fancy equipment. But if you try a few things, like I told you in 2008, those three paintings I did, I mean, I was hooked, right? <laughs> Once you feel you're hooked, you can start to look into other special tools and uh, they lead to special effects. So here's a uh, snowboard iron, uh, this is a temperature regulator, and this is a jaunting tool, which is used in Indonesia uh, by uh, artists who like to practice batik. And there's a little uh, tip down here, which delivers the wax in a fine line. So uh, those are things I acquired. And then I, I uh, scaled up my propane torch. I didn't want to get that little blue thing that you get at the hardware store. So I got a big tank. Uh, this lasts for a long, long time. Just hook on a hose to it. Uh, you've got a lot of propane in there. Other people like butane torches, um, like the ones used in the kitchen. You can use flat or cradled wooden panels, illustration board, masonite, ampersand panels, or multimedia art board. You can even do encaustic on thinner papers as long as you mount them on panel or behind glass. Now that's mostly referring to monotype. Encaustic monoprints are often done on rice paper, which is another favorite medium uh, that can be incorporated into and caustic work. And that's something I really want to experiment with more is um, taking these monotypes and actually incorporating them into um, an actual encaustic piece on a panel. And storage, don't worry, you'll never ever have enough room. No matter how big your studio is, it's going to soon become too small. <laughs> I found that out. And uh, here's 2013, moving along, trying new things. Um, I'd say that this one, this one I think was done on a, a masonite board. And I found that uh, a cheap masonite board, no one cost, no uh, gesso on it. You can put gesso, but I almost never use RNF gesso. I found that I had fewer pinholes. Um, those of you who have experience know what those pinholes look like. I found that accretion was super easy, which is the buildup of wax that's applied kind of in a dry brush, brush sort of uh, method. And then over here, what happens if you overheat? Well, think about it, you've got a flame, and you've got wax and you put the two together. And if you're a pyromaniac, like my son is, you're going to see a lot of movement of the wax, but you have full control of that. And uh, you kind of determine what your happy amount of like uh, distance of the, the heat source from your, your surface to how long you heat it. Uh, that's finesse. And then, I mean, again, I'm a mark maker, so not just shapes, but marks. How was I going to get those crazy marks that I got with my oils and my acrylics? There had to be a way. And sure enough, there was. Uh, and I, I uh, in my added videos to my um, encaustic course, I've added some that uh, speak of the Sorel transfer paper, pan pastels. Uh, these are pan pastels. And these are my Sorel transfer papers. I have a lot of different colors. 
And then I also have my woodies, which are water soluble waxy crayons, very cheap. I mean, kids use those. Neocolor tubes have uh, wax in them. So you can use all these things to add to your surface and it gets complex. It gets really crazy if you want it to. So um, I bet a lot of you use these mediums, the pan pastels, and you probably already have these in your studio. Um, and I'm always on the lookout for things that you can press into uh, the soft, like, like a warm layer of wax. So when you think about an encaustic surface, it goes through stages of like, you just heated it so it's hot, but then it goes all the way down to cool at room temperature. And during that time when it's cooling down, you have all this opportunity to press things like chains and bicycle, bicycle chains. And I took even like a uh, chainsaw, uh, chain and, and, you know, I found some bullet casings, uh, seashells, basically anything you can think of can be impressed into the wax surface. And that is a fabulous thing that you really can't do with other mediums very well. Uh, very easy to make your own caustic medium. You only need a few supplies, which I show here. Now by 2014, um, I've only been doing this for, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, uh, six years. That's not a very long time. Uh, and these are like paintings. This one was um, shown in a museum for a triennial show. And then this one uh, is, is kind of a one that was a breakthrough piece for me. Actually, both of these were. And one of the things I used in both of these was um, a, a new method to make shapes, which is in my special effects videos. I don't want to tell you too much, but yeah, I discovered a new way uh, to make shapes that were crazy and weird and kind of lacy. And for me that any, anything like that, when I discover something like that, I get really excited. So that was a game changer for me. Special effects uh, techniques have now been added to that original uh, encaustic course I made back in 2021. Uh, and I did that in conjunction with Painting with Fire 2023 to give those people who sign up for that some new material. And I'm pretty excited about it. So in 2015, I mixed encaustic with other mediums. So uh, encaustic, just like acrylic and just like coal wax and oil, you know, you can get away with a few things. And uh, what I what I found in time, and I didn't find this out until a lot of experimentation, but um, I, I, I did want to figure out how to get certain effects. Like, how do you get a shape you really want? How do you darken a value like this? Like, how do I make this shape if I don't want to do it in wax? Uh, this painting, I can't tell you what it looked like before I discovered pan pastels. It looked nothing like this. Down here, uh, I believe that was all pan pastel, white. And then up here, this whole band was darkened with like the indigo blue pastel. I, I just, when you can do something with a pastel and then you just heat it lightly and it melts right into the wax, that's a game changer because now you have a lot more control of value. And those of you who've taken my courses, um, Powerful Design, Personal Color, and the, the newest course, Art Success Masters, you know how important value is? It's everything. It is clearly everything in a painting. Uh, you, you've just got to know it. And uh, this bar here was pan pastel, pan pastel, pan pastel. The advantage is that you're working on a flat you know, I've already flattened the surface and by adding pan pastel, I'm not adding texture. And I personally like a very smooth surface. Some don't like a smooth surface. So again, you kind of find out what it is that you want to do. And two more paintings. These were, um, you know, how universities have like these percent for art programs and you can submit art. And if they choose your art, they buy it and it ends up on the campus. Uh, that's what happened to these two guys in the chemistry building. Um, this one was called Osmosis, and this one was Chem 101. And when I did this painting, I was clearly thinking about <laughs> all the things I, I remember in the in the textbooks from chemistry class, you know, from atoms to flasks, and um, here's like little atomic um, pathways, and of course, all that kind of thing. But anyways, you can you can work in so many different uh, genres: impressionist, abstract expressionist, minimalist, figurative, pop art, realism, and Laura Murphy is a fabulous figurative artist. I don't know how she does what she does, but if you take uh, her painting with fire course, she will be one of our instructors. That, and you, you've got to see her work. It's really incredible. Um, 2016, I began to scale up to four by six feet. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to be able to go bigger, but these paintings do get rather heavy. 
And, um, but I also continue to work small. So like this would be a six by six, a 12 by 12, uh, various sizes here, but don't worry. I mean, small work, big work, it's all to me uh, just as important just because the work is small. Like I don't say, oh, it's nothing. I know some people do. I've never felt that way. Uh, I, I, I don't ever want to feel like I'm too comfortable with a certain size of, of creating art because small work can teach you an awful lot. And if you become too comfortable working large and then you cannot work small, there's a problem. Um, you, you, you have to like train your brain to look at composition as composition and don't worry about the scale. So in caustic monotype, this is on the other side of our garage. So I took over two sides of our attached garage and I don't know where the cars were. They were outside the garage. These are the Paula Roland hot boxes. And again, I didn't get these until I really knew I loved encaustic. This is an encaustic monotype and these are the waxes that I made. You need to melt wax on a hot plate. These guys have thermostats in each box. We have four boxes here, one big plate. And I look at this largely as a, it's not that it's not a painting, but I look at this as a way to draw. Like if I started my day every day with an encaustic monotype, I just started my day drawing because you can see how you can get really fine marks. And I love this medium so much, um, just like encaustic. So, um, and this is where I did my framing. I'm just showing you, uh, this is again on Growing Line Road. And these were the, I, you know, I, I guess I had all three of these and here's Sorrow, one of my favorite paintings. Um, but then unfortunately, I, I was actually working toward a museum exhibition. I had two years to work toward it. And I was like in the last probably three months, I had a catalog that I was creating and then um, this happened. So a big fire came down our road. Uh, we were the second house. Uh, well, we could see this gigantic fireball at the end of the road about half a mile away. And uh, we had to get out. I, I think we had 45 minutes to grab what we could, which wasn't much. Uh, but because I had this show coming up, um, our two boys, um, these are our two boys, Kaylin and Evan, and then my sister-in-law and my husband, um, they all helped get our my art out. I mean, it was what they helped me do, and there was no time to get anything else out. And this is what it looked like four days later when we were allowed to come back to the house. Um, so yeah, that was a, a big thing because I had the show coming up and, you know, I, I, uh, they helped me get all the museum work out, but a lot of things were lost. Um, by August, so a month later, I, I had been looking around before the fire and I happened to like inquire about this space and it was still available. So I started to rent that. And, um, this is what it looked like many, many months later, like, probably after the museum show. Cause I mean, it's not gonna go from here to here <laughs> until you get on Amazon and start trying to replace everything you've lost. I had nothing left. I didn't have a single tin left. All my waxes were gone. All of my equipment was gone. And I had a, a deadline for my, my catalog. So what I did was I just got a few colors of pigment and I made some monotype waxes and I replaced my hot boxes. And uh, these are the monotypes in the back here. And I guess I, yeah, these are the monotypes that ended up in the museum show. When you don't have anything and you have a deadline, you, you kind of think, well, what can I do that will really, like, what's the medium, first of all, that I can do uh, most inexpensively, quickly, and also capture how I'm feeling right now? And I've always been a big believer then in, you know, things happen in life and, and a lot of them are hard, so hard. Um, what can I do that will help me express how I feel? And, and in caustic monotype, even if it hadn't been like the easiest thing to get the equipment for and, and the waxes, I have to say, I always come back to drawing. Drawing is like one of those things that you can really, uh, the, the line can be very expressive. So I've kind of poured everything into these monotypes and the show happened. Fortunately, I got my catalog done, uh, but it, it was um, an interesting time. Uh, the monotypes I did incorporated the ashes from our house and they added a dimension to the exhibit that would not have been there had it not been for the fire. So I don't want to say it was a good thing. I just want to say that whatever happens, um, you can use what that whatever's happening to you and use it in your art, like let your art help you heal. And that's what happened to me. Here are a few things that were left from the fire. They're all burnt. Um, so then uh, a year later, um, again, just 
moving forward, right? Like anything else, the more you do something, the more you discover um, using stencils and pan pastels, line work with Sorel transfer paper. Um, this is what I'll be focusing on for Painting with Fire 2023 is um, how you can be crazy with color, but then in the end, make it work with harmony. That's a pretty big deal. It may not sound like it, but for those of you who love color, I think it's pretty important to understand how to harmonize color because once you know how to do that, sky's the limit. You can work with 25 colors that clash like crazy and then in the end, pull it together. That's what I like. I mean, I wanna be able to play, but I also wanna be able to clean up my mess by the time I'm done. Um, these are very small scale, three inches by two inches, but you know, uh, these were framed behind glass. And if you're in a gallery, um, people are mesmerized by encaustic. They really are. I mean, they're gonna ask about them. What is this medium? How do you do it? You know, who's the artist? And I, I have to say that of all the mediums I work in, um, I think I, 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 I don't know. I feel like these um, are very much of interest by galleries and by uh, collectors. They just happen to love. Um, but again, you know, there is a learning curve, but it's it's not it's not terribly difficult. Um, wax is pretty forgiving, and the more you want to experiment with it, the more great results you're going to get. Um, these were monotypes, which I adhered to panel. And, uh, you know, these were in a gallery and over time these all sold. So, I mean, you know, it's just like these, I don't want to say that they didn't take me long because they kind of did. They took me 30 years for me to be able to do something this fast and pull it off. But on the other hand, um, wax cools, right? How long does it take for wax to cool? So that just um, really kind of appeals to me being a very impatient person. I work in a lot of series and, and grids. Um, you can do image transfers in this medium so uh, so well, and I'm not very good at it. These were like my experiments that I did just out of curiosity, like, can I do it? And yeah, if you, you can do it in acrylic, uh, you can do it in encaustic. And so if you like image transfers, you can certainly do it. And uh, so these are just some publications and um, I self-published these guys, these catalogs, and, you know, just here and there, I got got selected to uh, have my work featured in some of these um, magazines and books. And then here's Painting with Fire 2021, which I did in 2021. And this is Laura Murphy's uh, creation here. I, I would love to know more of how she came up with the idea. Um, I, I wasn't uh, an instructor in 2022. I felt I needed to take a break. And then she has invited me back for 2023. So uh, we're getting toward the end here. And I'm going to have Laura speak to this. Uh, and give you all the details because uh, you're going to want to know um, how vast and deep you can go in this medium, even if you're a beginner. And that's pretty enticing. If you're if you have never done this before, you won't believe what you get um, in her painting with fire workshop. So, just another one here. Um, Rolling Hills um, used a jaunting tool, that electric tool that can provide dots and lines. Uh, when I was in Oaxaca, Mexico, teaching cold wax and oil, we went to a, a paper making plant and I purchased these little pieces. I actually purchased like these necklaces that were handmade paper and really colorful. And I, I, I took them apart when I got back to my studio and I embedded them in wax. Um, you can do sculpture. Uh, there's so many things you can do with this medium. This is uh, in Tarazia, another special effect that I, I'm, uh, I've added to uh, a new video in the um, encaustic course. Um, this is what my demo for 2021 in Painting with Fire was how to work in a series. I had little six by six inch panels. I taped them all together around the perimeter. So they were painted as if they were one painting. And then I pulled them all apart and finished them. Um, these all, you know, they're gone, they're all sold. And again, it's like a great way to uh, work in a series and have work for a gallery, for example. And if you don't have a lot of time, um, when you work in this way in a series, you end up with cohesion. You've got one palette. You can focus on the things you care about. Again, shape, color, mark making. Those are the three things I really care about. Um, and then scaling up, I'd say 2021 through today. Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing. This is the four by six foot piece that I did in the small studio. This is a more recent four by uh, four foot by four foot, not that big, but gosh, you know, um, this ended up in a collector's home and I was really pleased because, you know, they're bright colors, 
but I love color. So um, so now um, my question for all of you um, in chat, and I hope you've been kind of chatting with each other, sharing your experiences with encaustic. Um, my question for you is after seeing what you can do with this medium, I mean, even this one painting, uh, lots of layering, um, saturated color, desaturated color, rhythm, pattern, mark making, you know, it's, it's like you can do anything in this medium. Would you like to learn encaustic? I'd love to know in chat, you know, say, would you love, if you're a beginner, would you like to learn encaustic? Maybe you're intermediate to advanced. Do you already love encaustic, but you want to learn more? I do. I. I don't ever want to stop learning in this medium. And then do you want to be the best encaustic artist you can be? Because what sets your art across, uh, apart from anybody else's in this medium or any medium is the ability to be sensitive to the surface, whatever that medium is. It could be acrylic, it could be wax, it could be um, oils, uh, whatever it might be. Your sensitivity to changes in color, changes in value, um, a mark that goes from thick to thin. This is what's going to set you apart from any other artist. It's it's the fine, final touches that really, really matter. It's not the initial stuff you throw on there. It's kind of like the refinement is going to set your art apart from anybody else's. So let me get to the next. Um, and now, uh, Laura, we would love to hear from you. And I'm going to see if I can spotlight you. Would you like to join us here and tell us about your baby here, painting with fire? Oh, you know, I really enjoyed that presentation, Pamela. It was absolutely riveting. Um, and there's so many things that I resonate with uh, in it. Um, but what really struck me was when you, you say, you never want to stop learning. And that's how I feel too. But I think it's one of the most important things, um, you know, that can, can be achieved with this course. There's so many techniques. I mean, even when I view the videos for the first time, I'm just like, ah, oh, I can't believe this. You know, it's it's I learn uh, all the time with it, despite, you know, having done this for 20 years or whatever. But um, yeah, it's it's an amazing course, whether you're starting out um, or, you know, whether you're an advanced uh, encaustic painter. But I think it's really it's one of those mediums where it's really important to, um, you know, to to take some lessons right at the beginning um, because it's otherwise, you know, you can spend a lot of time kind of stumbling around um, trying things that don't work. And I know this from experience because when I started with Encaustic, I had actually, uh, funnily enough, been living in Montana and I just saw, um, I was an oil painter, but I saw a woman working with encaustic. Um, and I was just absolutely, I was mesmerized. Um, and I didn't get to try it because I was a little nervous, you know, watching her use the torch and that sort of thing. But, um, and, and I was moving back to Ireland. So there I was moving back to Ireland, completely obsessed with this new medium. And I had to, you know, really teach myself how to do it at that time because there was nobody. The, um, there was nobody working at it or very few people in Europe at the time working with it. And, uh, and, and it was, um, it was Tony Sherman. I saw a painting by Tony Sherman in a book that this woman loaned me and that was it. I was completely hooked and it's so sad to see. I don't know if people are familiar with his work, but he, he has just passed away. Um, but an absolutely amazing Canadian artist to really push the the kind of boundaries of encaustic and what you could do with it. I mean, right up until uh, his last works, he did that. So, um, yeah, so I had to teach myself. And it's really, you know, I found I kept my first painting because it was so bad. And I just needed to be able to show people, um, you know, if they were taking a workshop, because sometimes they can be a little bit intimidated or they... Um, they, they're not happy, say, for the first quarter of the day, and they think, oh, I can never do this. And then, I, you know, I guarantee everybody by the end of the first day, you will be completely in love with it and you will be able to do it. But um, I do keep that first painting because it was so bad. I have to show it to people. <laughs> but, you know, this is a way of really um, um, making it so easy for yourself to, to you know, to to 
kind of um, circumvent all of that learning process and to really catapult yourself into um, being able to do this right you know right um and especially when you have these amazing instructors and i know pamela you are also providing this incredible course Mm -hmm. um as part of the um you know for people who may be i mean even if you're an experienced painter this course is invaluable um pamela's course that she offers as a kind of a, a bonus to anyone who signs up but um every single week you have a different uh lesson and they're all the world's best and caustic teachers um so it's really you know and maybe every lesson won't resonate you with you but at the same time there's going to be something in it that you know you can really pull into your work and um and it's really it's so rewarding to see the people who have um started off with, with it and now they're they're in galleries they're in shows they're selling their work i mean it's really it's so it's spectacular well, um, it's your brainchild. I'm, I'm so curious how you ever had not just the idea, but I mean, it takes so many um, different levels of being able to organize all these artists to invite yeah. them. And so I want to hats off to you, Laura. I just think what you're oh, your, thank your you. difference in the world, for sure, in this medium, uh, you have to be so proud of what you've done. And I want to congratulate you. Yeah. Well, you know, I, the biggest part for me is the community that we've built um, it means the world to me. And that was sort of where it started because, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, this was, I guess I had the idea at the end of 2020, I was really missing my art tribe. You know, I was used to teaching. I was used to going different places. I was used to teachers coming to Ireland. Um, and I I really, I absolutely loved that aspect of, you know, being a painter. And, and I find when you work within Costa, you get really passionate about it, you know. Um, uh, any of you who do it I'm sure you'll mm-hmm. understand what I'm talking about but it becomes and you could talk for hours to people about it so I was really missing that um and that was and that was really uh, and I was terrified as well of also you know the loss of income and I knew all of the the my my friends who were teachers were all experiencing the same thing so um it was one of those kind of four o'clock in the morning brainchild you know, those are brainstorms or whatever you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you think, oh, this is something that could work. Wow. Um, I don't know. Sometimes you you find answers to problems. I find when you wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> um, or, or even if you have problems with painting, sometimes the, you know, the resolution will come at that time, but that was really it. And so on, I think uh, like a Friday night, I sent out 26 emails to, you know, all of these artists that I really respected um, and and loved their work. And by the following day, you know, by the end of Saturday evening, I had 26 people on board wanting to do it. Yeah. So, you know, and I never, it never occurred to me that it would be as successful as it was. Um, You know, I thought, oh, wow, if we get 200 people to do it, it will be amazing. But the first year, I think we had close to 2000. And then last year, the same again. So it's really and people just love it. Um, It's I think it's a very powerful um, connector as well as a learning platform. And, you know, it's 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 yeah, I love it. So this (laughs) is one of the wonderful things that came out of COVID because that's what caused you, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what can yeah. And it was just simply I, I I was heartbroken over not having my my tribe and um and I and I knew other people were also really missing that aspect of our lives and 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 I think artists need that connection. We need people around us who understand how we think and what we're thinking about. And um, you know, <laughs> if we yeah. walk along for 30 minutes about wax. They get it. <laughs> so with your uh, so, painting with fire, uh, now this is Laura's third year. And um, Laura, do you want to talk a little bit about how this works in terms of like, uh, number one, it's lifetime access and everything's yes. recorded. So you kind of go at your own pace. But can you explain how they uh, receive the information like um, on a weekly basis for a whole year? You want to talk about that? Okay, sure. Yeah. So um it's uh, um, everything is done through the website and then we send out an email every week, every Wednesday, uh, usually hits um, around 
probably before noon every Wednesday. And there's a link in there for um, the class that's coming out that week. You will know in advance what the class is going to be and what me, uh, what uh, materials you might need and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so it's right there in the email and you can uh, um, just click on and, and work away to your heart's content. You have lifetime access, so you don't need to physically be present. You can click into the, uh, the, um, the class anytime you want. Um, so it can be really at your convenience. You can go back if something really resonated and, and, uh, you know, review that, um, it operates on the searchy platform, which I find really useful because you're able to, uh, if you want to search, for example, if you know that somebody used, um, I don't know, um, stencils, we'll say in a particular lesson, you can just go back to that lesson, type in stencils and everywhere stencils is are used will come up. So it's very easy to search for different topics, um, that kind of thing. And uh, I Oh, and we have a whole bunch of discounts from, you know, the various uh, encaustic materials provider um, and also, you know, like stents of speaking of stencils, Mary Beth Shaw always gives us a discount. So, uh, yeah, it's really it's really powerful. And then we have a very vibrant Facebook group where you can uh, interact with each other and with the teachers. And if you have questions, you can show your work, you know, you can um ask for if you have problems with anything you can ask for help um yeah it works very well i think yeah thank you laura i you know the one thing i wish is that back in 2008 i would have had access to this yeah. wow i mean so many things that i kind of stumbled yeah. upon myself and 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 when you look at the depth and breadth like let me go on to let me just quickly review this so uh laura murphy offers these year long uh, there are year-long painting with fire workshops and lifetime access. So if you bought 2021, you still have access to that. If you bought 2022, you will always have access to that. Now, 2023 has not been released yet, and that will become available uh, April 26th. Is that right, Laura? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. But you can yeah, start April running after that. Yet to get the early bird pricing, which um, instead of 289, you pay 249 is if you enroll on March 10th through the 26th. And this, um, now I wanna explain what this link is here. So March 10th, uh, you can start to um, enroll. And if you use my link, this is my link here, that uh, basically Painting with Fire 23 is what that stands for, but it's gonna take you over to, it's a redirect link over to Essence of Mulrani Painting with Fire 2023. Now, every one of the instructors here has their own affiliate link. So some of you understand what an affiliate link means. And because I'm offering this, my free and caustic course, which is really geared for beginner through advanced. Um, if you're a beginner and you've never picked up any encaustic wax brushes or anything like that, I pretty much prepare you for the painting with fire experience. I saw this back in 2021, the first time Laura launched Painting with Fire 2021. And I thought, gosh, if I were new, I don't think I, these are all experts. <laughs> and I mm -hmm. felt that um, it's not that you couldn't do pretty well, you know, uh, learning from these experts, but I kind of felt like thinking back to myself uh, in 2008, I would have wanted a primer. Like I want to know how to make my own encaustic medium. I want to get set up. So if you sign up on March 10th and you go here, uh, you get my course for free. Laura then emails me and says, hey, such and such a person has just used your affiliate link and you can give them your free course now. So if, if you sign up on March 10th, you essentially have more than a month to get set up and try it out and, you know, um, maybe paint a few paintings. And so now I just want to move on to um, next slide here. Yeah, these are the 26 of the world's best encaustic constructors and each year, you know, the lineup changes, um, some come back, um, others, there are new. And this is just examples of the work that's done by all these different painters. So um, you can see by the styles, like some are more sculptural, some are figures. Is this yours, Laura? Isn't that yours? Yes. That's yes. Right. Beautiful mm -hmm. figural paintings and you, you name it, installations, um, you know, sculptures, landscapes, any genre of art, you're going to find it here. And again, this uh, early bird pricing, the 10th to the 26th, 249 instead of 289. But if you enroll with me here at this link, you will get um, my course in addition to, and it's totally separate. It has nothing to do with um, 
Laura's Painting with Fire. It's something that comes from my school, which is hardensuccess.com, that I will give you that in Costi course, which will teach you everything about the basics, plus these new special effects videos, which I just added a couple of weeks ago. And uh, these are like, this is the original course, um, how to make your own encaustic medium, safety and ventilation, how to make your own paints, the types of mark making materials to collect, comprehensive PDF listing suppliers and tools, and how to care for your encaustic paintings. And then for those of you who are intermediate to advanced, I've added now all of these special effect videos. Um, again, brand new, nobody's seen it yet. Uh, it, it will be open to you as soon as you enroll on March 10th. And um, the value is now 250 for the course. So by enrolling in Painting with Fire, you're essentially getting $250 off by getting my course for free. But you, you must use my link, obviously, because it's my um, affiliate link. And the first 100 artists who sign up with Laura at this link right here will get my course for free. Again, both Painting with Fire and my course are lifetime access. And let's see here, same thing. Um, thank you guys for joining us. And we really hope to see you in Painting with Fire 23 and my encaustic course. And if you have questions, this is my support link for my school, artandsuccess.com is just support at. So now we wanna answer your questions because we're sure you have them. So let me stop sharing. And uh, does anyone have a question for Laura uh, on Painting with Fire or uh, for me? Uh, you can raise your hand. Awfully quiet. Okay, there's a question from Jessica. Some people know how to raise that hand. We love that. Okay, so let me just um, spotlight you here. Okay, Jessica, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Just a technical question. Hi, Pam. Hi. Um, I went to the, your link, the pwf23.com, and it asked for a password in order to move forward is there some password we're supposed to put in in order to sign up okay i'm going to let laura um answer that question well it doesn't open for registration until march 10th oh so okay. that would be why so you can't actually register you know because it's an affiliate program so um yeah so you can't actually register until march 10th but if you go in then you will be able to um oh okay do that that's a great question. Thank you, Jessica. Okay. Um, let's see. Now we've got Judith Woolley has a question. Let me add spotlight. Okay, Judith, go ahead. You liked it. There you go. Hi. Hi. Judith. Hi. Uh, yeah. Um, thanks so much for the presentation. It's just really, really makes me want to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, I've been told that I've been told a few times that my style would. Um, uh, you know encaustic would be quite good for the way that I paint so mm -hmm. so I definitely really want to do it but I was just wondering Laura if you ever do any um face-to-face -face teaching at all I'm not based oh. in Ireland but I do go to Ireland quite a lot because I'm Irish yes oh yes um actually in uh our school in Mulrani I'm in Mulrani right now but we have uh -huh. a, uh, we have a school here I, this is the place where Pamela is going to be teaching next year. But uh, yeah, if you look up my, it's Essence of Mulrani. Um, uh -huh. And if you look up that website, you'll be able to see the different uh, things that are happening. And I do teach um, in-person classes too. Lucky. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Gail Wager. Uh, let me get you to add spotlight. There we go, Gail. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I missed the first few minutes, but I'm wondering um, what, how much does it, how much is the equipment to get started? I mean, what, maybe you, you went into that already. What do we need to start and what, what kind of investment would that be? Yeah. I mean, that's a really good question, but I have to say, considering you can go to a thrift store and get the heated elements, right. Being a pancake griddle and a frying pan, I'd say those two things are pretty necessary. Uh -oh. Aside from that, um, so that would be like ten dollars. Go to the uh -huh. um, ten U.S. dollars. Um, go to the um, hardware store and grab some chip brushes. Each one of those is like a dollar ten or whatever. I mean, you don't need a lot to get started with. Uh, you can work on masonite, plywood, paper, uh, thick paper, and uh, you know I wouldn't really recommend a beginner invest a lot. Anyways, the idea is to get just. Yeah. 
most minimal things. And if you, if you didn't want to make your own wax and you bought three colors, blue, red, and yellow, right? Um, primary colors and on your pancake brittle, just heat them up, mix them, put it on the panel. Now you will need some form of heating it, propane or butane. You may have a little torch in your kitchen if you make creme brulee. You can use that. A lot of <laughs> artists will use their creme brulee torch. Um, you might have mm -hmm. a you might have a heat gun, and that's not the same as a hair dryer. So that, uh, but a propane torch, if you buy that at uh, a hardware store, I mean that's maybe what ten dollars. Um, I'm not sure how much a tank of propane is. It's not very much. So, I mean, in my opinion, I'm pretty sure I started for under a hundred dollars. How about you, Laura? Yeah. You think that's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, and even, you know, I I can often pick up um, encaustic irons. Well, they're not encaustic irons, they're travel irons, but I've adapted them to encaustic. So, uh, and you can pick those up in secondhand stores as well. So, um, yeah, uh, and uh, what do you call this? Like an electric frying pan or something like that to just heat up your wax. Um, so, yeah, it's it's actually really easy. And then a lot of the okay. time, like Pamela said, you might have the other things already in your studio, uh, like pan pastels or um, woodies or things like that. So so it's yeah. really not that. I mean, people do say, oh, it's expensive to start, but that's only if you, you know, go for the top end stuff, which you really don't need to do. Yeah. I mean, I never have. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good point, Laura. And, and the thing about these heated elements that uh, you need to know is that the reason you get a electric frying pan or a pancake griddle is because they have a thermostat. So you don't want to just kind of get something that you can't control how hot something is getting. You really kind of need that temperature control. But I certainly never bought a single frying pan or heated griddle until maybe five years in when I decided I, I wanted to get one with a like a lighter colored surface. But I think I only bought one. And I continue to go to thrift stores and pick up if I want to work and, you know, have several going at a time. Me too. <laughs> I think I have about 10 irons. It's like, I'm afraid they're going to stop making them or something. <laughs> well, you're a teacher and you have a studio where you have live classes. So it's great that you can yeah. get them in a thrift store. Okay. Gail, any other questions? No, thank you. Okay. You know, just to start, you know, I, I would probably start, you know, simple <laughs> start of course. for sure. Absolutely. There's no reason to do anything more than start simple. Let me add uh, Mary. Mary, do you want to unmute? Hi. Yeah. I'm just wondering um, about the amount of interactivity um, and uh, how many people approximately in the course Um whether there's feedback on pieces or suggestions or well, that aspect, or is it primarily more technique driven? So we have two courses. Well, I think it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, are you talking about Pamela's course? Are you talking about the, the painting with fire? Both. Okay. Oh, okay. Either one. <laughs> yeah. Laura, Laura is. Then, is then, yeah. Laura, given that she has 26 instructors each year, has a, a very vibrant Facebook group. And because of yeah. that, I feel like, and because I'm an instructor there, I feel like if anybody takes my mini course, they can certainly ask me there. I, I sort of felt like my course is uh, going to hit all the basics. It's very thorough and you mm -hmm. can always reach out to me, but I don't have a separate Facebook group for my course because painting with fire is, is like a global uh, Facebook group. And you can certainly find me there. So does that answer your question? Um, so, so is it is it a really huge group or is it? Oh, it's usually, it's usually pretty big, but there is a, a lot of activity, um, a huge camaraderie. Um, people are, you know, if you ask for help with your work, then people will gladly give it. I mean, they don't just critique, uh, you know, willy nilly. They wait for people to ask, you know, for help mm -hmm. um and i think that's really important because you know if you if you put up something you're really proud of you don't want somebody you know kind of taking it apart but um yeah i think it's really helpful um yeah okay yeah is it thanks. scheduled every day what's that is it scheduled every day the class like do you have a certain time like oh, central no. time it, it, no, it comes out on Wednesday. So there are pre-recorded videos. 
Uh, so they they will land in your inbox on Wednesday, but then you can look up or you can you can uh, access it whenever you want. It doesn't have to be the day it arrives, you know, because they're not um, they're not live classes. It's pre-recorded, so you can just take it at your leisure then. Right. But the Facebook group then is is um, people interact all the time with that, and and the teachers do as well. And there's a lot of uh, you know back and forth. I think that's really important. I love that aspect of it, you know, because it does feel like um, you don't lose the momentum. It's very exciting and it's interesting and there's always something new happening. And there's so much to celebrate because you see people making these incredible strides in their work. So uh, that's one of the really exciting things for me. Yeah. And and uh, if anyone uh, does sign up for Painting with Fire 2023 and gets my course, I have done live Q and A calls. So what will happen is um, on March 10th, you know, I, I encourage you to put a big black Sharpie mark on March 10th so that you can get in. And uh, uh, what I'll do then is, um, you know, arrange a couple of live Q and A's and those will be added to the curriculum of this uh, encaustic course that I have because we want to answer all the questions. and. Uh, the only way that I can do that is um, what I'll do is reach out to all of you who have signed up and arrange the calls um, kind of on an as needed basis. So if I get like, say, 10 questions, I'll call a live call. You'll jump on and be able to ask your question. OK, so let me um, add spotlight here. So, Becky, you want to unmute, please? <laughs> Hi. Yes, um, I get nervous around open flames and that kind of stuff. And so are the heat guns really effective with the acoustic? Laura? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I go back and forth. I don't always use a, um, a torch. Um, no, heat guns are fantastic. And you can also get those craft ones, which I find, you know, they're small. They're um, like a, a kind of a long, narrow shape. And mm -hmm. they work beautifully as well, but also little irons, um, you know, there's various sizes, but anything, any iron that doesn't have steam holes in it will work mm -hmm. beautifully. So, yeah, you don't ever have to, to touch a torch if you don't want to. Okay. Yeah, good point. And, and the other question I had was, um, okay, so I know they're supposed to be well ventilated area. Um, and is that because when the wax melts, I mean, does it emit fumes? Uh, what is the if your, behind. Wax, if your wax burns okay. it will emit, emit fumes okay. but you you know you always try to avoid that um and and be vigilant about that and it's not a dangerous medium at all but you do want to be vigilant about um you know about the the temperature that the wax goes to which mm -hmm. is you know 200 or under okay. um and, and then you won't have any problems with it. But, you know, ventilation is important. I think for anything like even oil paint, I mean, acrylic, you know, we don't really know what that would do. So um, so I think it's important for any art studio to have uh, ventilation. But, you know, we, we try to be as careful as possible with um, and cost. And it doesn't have to be fancy. Like, you know, I showed you I had a box fan in the window. You could have an open door. Then you want to have yeah. your heated elements kind of close to the area where the the there's air exchange, but it does not have to be anything fancy. Okay. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We have a question from Valerie. Okay, Valerie, hang on. Um, you can unmute. There you go. Hi, um, Valerie. Hi, how are you? How are you? Um, okay, so unmute myself. Did I do that? You're, good. You're unmuted. You're good. Um, I've been working on encaustic boards lately okay. because you know I work on panels and sometimes I work um, on panels that I've you know scraped all the wax off so um, because I just I, I want to reuse my board and you know the problems with holes not you know and I my finish is always smooth so during the layering process, is there anything I can do to keep those holes from getting bigger, or go, going all the way down to the surface of the board? You mean the pinholes, right? Little pinholes? Yes, but they can get bigger than pinholes. Hmm. I've never had that really happen. Have you, Laura? Are you using plain plywood or are you using, is there an encaustic 
is there an encrusted I'm, gesso I'm, on the horns? They're usually birch. Okay. Um, well, it's possible that you're overheating in that case. Um, and the pinholes are from the wood emitting some kind of, uh, you know, moisture or something. So um, if you wanted to, you could try uh, working, uh, using a couple of layers of chalk paint uh, on top of the board or encaustic gesso and then see how you get on with that. But it does sound like maybe you're, um, you're overheating parts of it. Okay. Yeah. And one thing you might try, because pinholes used to be kind of something I, I really, in the early days, wanted to not have. And I happened to try just a sheet of masonite, and I found that, wow, without any gesso on it at all, masonite being very inexpensive, um, I never got, I, I got so many fewer pinholes. So just as a test, you might try that compared to your Baltic birch and just see what happens. Because yeah. encaustic boards are... Um really expensive and they i just really are yeah mm -hmm. and i yeah. just don't know if they're necessary or not yeah i, mean, I agree with you um, yeah. yeah yeah every everybody i don't the way i work i'm not concerned at all about pinholes i mean that to me just the mo more texture i have the better um so you know i'm probably not the best person to ask about that um you know because it, if i had pinholes i wouldn't care <laughs> Yeah, and everybody but, has a different. But for, you know, from what I've seen, I think that that is, um, you know, maybe a, you've developed a hot spot or something like that on your board. Thank you so much. Thanks, Valerie. Yeah. Okay. okay, let's see, Bonnie. I have a question from Bonnie. Ah, yes. Can Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, Bonnie. All right. Um, I do have a question regarding the painting with fire. I I participated in twenty one and twenty two. And I'm looking very much forward to 23. Oh, great. Uh, what is happening? What is happening now, though, is there is so much uh, sharing and knowledge out there. It's a knowledge base now. Mm -hmm. uh, is are there any plans to have a searchable index or some kind of uh, way that we can go back to all of these other um, all this other advice and all this other this knowledge that is there that might not be applicable for us at the moment, but oh, six months down the line, who was it who said this and suggested that? And yeah. I find it so wealthy a source. It's like a it's a um, a kind of a one stop shop almost for anything you want to know mm -hmm. about anything that occurs in in caustic. And I'm finding the more information that's out there. Um, the longer it takes me to to search back in it. I mean, there isn't enough yellow highlights yeah right to, uh, you should just ask then if you you know if you just on the facebook group are you on the facebook group oh yes oh yes yeah just yes. ask the question there and i will usually be able to answer or somebody will jump in and and uh answer for you um and the other way is then with the hashtags in the facebook group as well <laughs> um you know that's that's a way of finding it um but yeah. also on the in the as i mentioned on the searchy platform if you go into the videos and then just in the search option you'll see a little um um magnifying glass and just type in whatever it is you're looking for in that mm -hmm. video and it'll show you exactly where it's mentioned so <laughs> that's also useful um yeah but i think um you know, something a little more general like that. Just ask in the Facebook group and somebody will know. All right. I don't think right you. away. Okay. Thank you, I'm so glad you're enjoying it though. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Thank oh, you. great. Okay, Porter. Great. Let's hey see. There. How are you doing? Thank you for joining I'm doing us. Well, I was going to have to leave today, but I I didn't have to, so it's oh, exciting that I get to ask a question. Uh, what I, I'm kind of an impatient person too, Pamela, and so my question is: um, if there are only a hundred people who will get in, starting on midnight or actually twelve a.m. on March ten, that means that anybody in over in Europe will. <laughs> We'll get it quicker. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's what I know. I know I'm being really crazy and anal about this, but hey, I just gotta say, 
<laughs> you know, that's a, a legitimate question. And um, hey, if I get over 100 people, maybe I'll just have to make some exceptions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Don't, don't I think you if you ask Pamela. I'm actually a pretty nice person. So if, if somebody's knocking at my door and wants the course and they send up for painting with fire 23 and they're after the hundred people, I just might have to make an exception. <laughs> so don't okay. you. Hurt, okay? I think she's done that before. Yeah. I think right. I kind of do that. Hey, and thank you for the book tab uh, feedback for our sons, by the way. <laughs> Oh, hey, I tell you, we I love my Vogue. I take it every day, twice, and you can see I'm just alive. <laughs> well, you are. That really hit me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much, much for okay. your help. We'll Thank see you, you. soon. Okay. Bye-bye. That was a good question. Susan Hale. Oh, my goodness. It's wonderful to have you, Susan. How are you doing? Unmute. There you go. Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Oh, you're muted, dear. Unmute. Yeah, hi. Good to see you too. Thank you. I would, I've always wanted to try this, so I'm really interested. A couple of questions. The paper, that, the heavy paper, what kind of paper would that be if we wanted to, with your course, you know, when we're starting out? Right. I mean, I, for paper, I really would use illustration board, which I think is 16 ply is the ply I have. It's Strathmore, probably 300. But if you email me uh, support at artandsuccess.com, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, when I talked about okay. the thin rice paper, that's for mono print, monotype. Oh, right. so that's a different thing. Now, um, okay. you could also experiment with that by just your pancake griddle. You melt some wax on it. You take some rice paper, you put it down, you peel it up and you've got yourself a print. But we're talking more about the method of uh, encaustic medium, which has the the pigment, the beeswax and the Demar resin. A oh, little different, right? right? Okay. Yeah. So the MDF board that you were talking about, I know with some um, media, other media, if you don't put a surface over the MDF board, it can seep into the paint, but that's not the case with encaustic. So I used masonite board that has this masonite board, masonite board very inexpensive. So you can ask the. You uh, don't have to put. Uh, no. Um, in fact, I never. <laughs> To be honest, I hardly ever use RF gesso. I don't know about you, Laura. And the chalk paint no, is- No, I never do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, because, you know, you can use white encaustic medium if you want a white surface. And uh, you can also like just glue some white, nice, uh, say watercolor paper down and then your paint will stick to that as well. But uh, if you go straight onto MDF or not MDF, but um, Masonite, you could ask the- uh, um, hardware store to cut that into say eight by 10 panels or 12 by 12 panels, because you kind of buy the whole sheet and it'll be very inexpensive for you to try that. Okay. And then uh, the other qu one question about the ventilation, if I have air conditioning in my studio, is that good enough? If I have the heating element near that, or do you still have to open a window? Hmm. I don't something. know. Right. Oh, I would definitely open a window. Yeah. Um, well, actually, being in Ireland, I'm not real familiar with air conditioning. <laughs> I don't have it here. <laughs> um, but I don't. But is that an extraction system? I mean, does it pull the air out and bring it outside? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. And then, about, yeah, yeah. What you're looking for is something that's going to pull the, you know, the the air up from your panel and then direct it outside. So even a box fan like panel set in the window and if your your um, palette is underneath that then that will do it you know uh, once opening, the, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you opening the windows here sometimes mosquitoes fly in or think we have oh right yeah here. yeah if you put a box fan in there they can't get in or you know as long as you've got your fan if it's, if, yeah. yeah thank you okay thank you and great thank you so much okay <laughs> so it starts um the 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 um, Laura, your workshop starts in April. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the April workshop 20th. starts. The, the classes start on April twenty sixth. Registration opens on March tenth, and March then 10th. you register on March tenth, or you know between March tenth and uh, and April twenty sixth. Then you get the early bird price, but you also get Pamela's course, which will give you time to you know work away and get up to speed and. 
fall totally in love with this medium. Yeah, you really, <laughs> I'm sure I will. When I, now, how many it's weeks incredible. Does, how many weeks does your program go on? I know it's lifetime access, but how many? Oh, 52 you, weeks. The oh, oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Whole year, yeah, a lot of learning and like oh, it's lovely. I mean, it's almost yeah. like taking a university course in a way because you know you have all these different, uh, you know, just top notch teachers and um, and and really, it's best practice. That's what you're learning is yeah. best practice and um, and it's tried and tested. It's not you know you're not um, just setting things on fire. It's a you know it's really and it's it's very it's quite i mean it's a lot of fun but it's quite serious our approach is very um you know masterful so yeah. all the also, instructors share to me what their forte is like what what do they love about the medium and they they really do they're so passionate about the medium they they share you know and there's nothing that they won't help you with if you have a question so yeah i highly highly recommend <laughs> Sounds and, great. you know, the interesting thing is, you know, because there's so many different approaches, like if Pamela was teaching, for example, working large, she would teach her way of doing it. And somebody else might have a, you know, a very different way of doing it. I mean, you get the same result in the end, but it's really wonderful to have different, you know, different approaches from people who have spent so much time learning, honing their skills and yes, learning their craft. Yeah, and the like end a lot of fun. Help you find your own mm -hmm. a lot faster in, in the medium, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Thanks Jan. Okay, let's Hi. see. Yes. Hi, Jan. It's me. Hi. Hi. I'm with your course, and um, all my artwork, everything is way back, like seven hours uh, time difference away from me. But I always wanted to do encaustic, and I'm very interested in this course because I want your um, intro. So can I, uh, because I'd be traveling, can I um, apply today? <laughs> I have to wait. <laughs> Is that possible I if mean, I apply talking, today? Are you well, talking to me or Laura? Uh, uh, no, I would uh, apply through you for Laura's course, right? Well, you have to go to my special link. It's um, the www. Yeah. GW, but it's not open till March 10th. So it's not even possible yeah. to sign up for Painting with Fire yet. You'll have to mark your calendar yeah. no matter where you are in the world. You can go to a website, right? Uh, uh, at this, uh, on the 10th, I'd be here. So, and I, um, I'm in touch with the other world. Uh, 2 a.m. Eastern to uh, all through the night. So when do I start calling you? <laughs> oh, you have until you have between March 10th and April 26th to sign up. No, no, no. I want to get early, uh, early bird kind of yeah. thing with you. So just yes. give me a date, give me a time. And uh, so it's not possible to do it today, right? Correct. That's it opens correct. on the 10th. It does for everybody. Everybody in the world has to wait until March 10th. Everybody. <laughs> when does the bell ring? What time, March 10th? Oh, she what wants to know, know. Is it is it 12 midnight um Ireland time or what time zone? No, it's um um it is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yeah. Yay. Right. Uh, so March 10th, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. So That's whatever good. time that is the rest of the world, it's, you know, it's going to be the same. And then can we uh, get to uh, your course, Pamela, for, uh, because I would like to do that way ahead. I'm, yes. I have been away from up because I, I just moved in here and I'm too drifting into a social media kind of uh, headache. But I'm itching for the, uh, for the encaustic. The reason so, I offer my course um, the minute you sign up is so that you will have four to six weeks to go through my entire course, get everything that, you know, all those thrift store things you need, get your studio set up, learn the basics so that when you start painting with fire, you're kind of a mini expert already, right? You already have the, the main thing. And when you start painting with fire, it'll be like, oh, I understand how to heat my wax. I understand how to... Precisely. 
Yes. So don't worry. As soon as you sign up, Laura sends me a link and she says, okay, uh, Jan has signed up and then I enroll you for free and you have access. Okay. Okay. So that's basically what I want. It's that intro. You know. okay. Yes. I'm Thank you happy. so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you, Jan. Great question. Thank you. Okay. Lisa debates. Oh my gosh. She's my sweetheart. Okay. Lisa, do you have a question for us? She's my, my chat. Hi. I didn't expect to see you today. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. I had technical difficulties and all kinds of stuff. So I came on late, but oh, I'm here you. and thank got you. to see most of it. So yeah. And thanks. of course, you know, hearing you talk about it all, I didn't realize I have done some encaustic but for some reason. I thought, you know, the torch, my husband won't allow me near a torch. And so I thought there's no way I could possibly ever do it, but I have a heat gun and I've actually done. And so, but I'm thinking what you're doing is different. No. This is what I did with a heat gun. Wow. Oh, and it's oh, what, wonderful. It's oh, I love your colors. Thanks. Thanks. It's so papers in there and that's like a watercolor painting of an orchid that you know I kind of shredded the paper so it'd be thinner just one layer you know you can take some of that off and Holy but God. so this is this it, is what you're doing or different it, it's it's better <laughs> well, <laughs> stuff I'm doing that's for sure Lisa that's great yeah how about that so so it can be done with a heat gun. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. See, I oh. thought I couldn't do it because of the torch. Lisa, with your watercolor, like, uh -uh. Listen, with your watercolor, I'm telling you, I, I swear, and I, I maybe this is just me, but I've seen, I know you're in galleries, but I think when people see that lustrous surface, there is just nothing like it, right, Laura? Nothing like it. If you put wax yes. on your watercolors, not only are they not a watercolor anymore, they're an encaustic. And I work in four mediums and my encaustics are, are more expensive than the other three mediums simply because kind of, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kind of perception. It's, it's just, it's not that it's really more expensive. It's just that it's rare. You're not gonna find nearly as many encaustic artists in the world as oil painters or acrylic painters. And, and it's not so much the expense of it, it's the expertise. Uh, you yeah. will learn your own expertise, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we said you can do things with encaustic that you can't do with anything else. That's right. And it's just, it's incredible. It's really, it's such an incredible medium. Wow. Yeah, so oh. I think There's you're always be something. New and <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of excited. And, and Cecile, I think, was saying that she sets herself up underneath her stove, on top of her stove, with the exhaust fan. Yeah, and and yeah. that's how I'd have to do it. And But I never even thought of that. So that, you know, that right there just answers that question. Yeah. And, Get a and, sheet of wood uh, to put yeah. on top of your burners to protect your stove top and you're good to go. You've got a vent. That I never that's what she that. said. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and she puts a silicone mat on top of the wood yep. to put everything on top of and then just moves it, you know, whenever she's cooking. And also she mentioned watercolors in her wax. And that's why I was like, oh my gosh, I've done that, you know? So wow, yeah. I just I just had no idea this was the same thing. I don't, I don't know why I didn't get it. I think the torch okay. threw me off. But you're but Lisa, yeah. This is an amazing watercolors, you guys. And watercolor paintings, I know you've been putting cold wax over them, but wait till you put encaustic over them. You will not believe how yeah. oh. it's gonna be so lustrous. Yeah. It's amazing. Yay. I'm excited. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm so happy you're yeah, here. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thanks for the invitation. Okay. We've got a question from Cynthia. Cynthia, would you like to unmute? Can you send out the supply list of what we need ahead of time so before March 10th? Uh, yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, and, and keep in mind, yeah, my supply list, uh, I could even come up with like one per budget, you know, if a person's on a budget. I've done that before, um, kind of like the bare bones, what do you really need? Uh, so I'll, I'll work on that and get that out to everybody with the recording, okay? Um, I think that's good, you guys. Let me go back to gallery view. Laura Murphy is, um, how late is it for you right now in Ireland, my dear? <laughs> it, it, well, it's only 10.30, so it's oh. not bad. Not I haven't turned bad. into a pumpkin yet. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, well, listen, I want to thank all of you. What an amazing uh, group you are. I find that, I don't know about you, Laura, but uh, because I've taught in other mediums, I don't know why, but I find that the encaustic community is like the most passionate and they're not shy. I guess yeah. maybe since you know you yeah. have to use a heat gun or a torch that maybe that right away says you're not going to be a shy person. <laughs> but um, thank you all for being here. I'm going to work on sending you all the recorded uh, uh, call here. Uh, I will include a, uh, the supply list and I'll have like a budget sort of list for those who want to get started collecting things from the thrift store. Um, uh -huh. And there's going to be a man dash for the thrift store. So you guys, that's the one thing you're going to find that if there's other encaustic artists in your area, yeah, there's kind of a, <laughs> you're all kind of looking for the same things. But so Laura, anything to add to that? Well, just I suppose, it, you know, even if you do have to purchase um, the griddle from Amazon, if you can't get something in the in the second hand store, I mean, they're not that expensive either. I think, what are they like $30 or something for um, the uh, Presto ones? Yes. Um, so, you know, you can get a decent ones for not not a huge amount of money. That's really true. They're not that much, you guys. And um, yeah, so if you guys have additional questions, um, my email is support at artandsuccess.com. Yeah, so we're so excited that you were all here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Laura. Everybody clap for Laura. Uh, such a pleasure to be here. And so everybody look up you. Laura Murphy's artwork. What is your website, Laura? Laura Murphy Artist. Laura Murphy Artist.com. Okay, so look up her art, get inspired. And uh, start to um, think about gathering your supplies. Okay, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you. Um, sign up is March 10th. Thanks, Laura, for joining Thank us. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really fun. I just love this community. So. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. You're really brilliant at this. I really enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> so did I. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone.